In this video, we are going to do horizontal analysis of the income statement of Coca-Cola. These are real financial numbers. You can get these numbers from the Yahoo Finance website. This is going to be an important discussion. I'm going to explain a few key points. So watch till the end because this may clear up some of the doubts you have and will also help you explain income statement or analyze income statement better. Okay, let's start. So what is horizontal analysis? Horizontal analysis is really comparison of numbers or figures in the financials of a company over the period of time. So in this case, you can see that we have the income statement of Coca-Cola for three years, 2020, 2019, and 2018. A horizontal analysis would be comparing the change in each line item of the income statement over the period of time. Now we can do an analysis between any two specific years. For example, we can compare 2020 and 2019 only, or we could also compare a trend from 2018 to 2020. And if you have more than three years, you could also do a trend for more than three years. But in general, the idea is to see the year over year growth or changes in the financials of, an, of a company. So in this first part, I'm going to compare the results of 2019 and 2018. And then in the second part, I'm going to compare 2020 versus 2019. And the reason is that what happened with Coca-Cola is you can see that from 2018 to 2019, there was a growth in revenue, the total revenue increased. And then from 2019 to 2020, there is a decline in revenue from 37 billion to 33 billion. And this gives us a good opportunity of looking at both pictures when you have increase in sales and decrease in sales and how it should or it does impact your other line items in the income statement all the way to EBITDA or earnings before interest, tax, depreciation and amortization. So let's start with 2019 versus 2018. So first things first, we are going to compare variances on amounts, uh, which I call dollar here, and also percentage. And you, would, you will see why this is important. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Let's start with the calculation. How do we do the calculation? So whenever you are calculating financial variances, you will usually start with the most recent financials, which in this case is 2019, and calculate a difference with the previous financials. So let's do that for the amount variance you will calculate based on D6, which is 2019, minus E6, which is 2018. Press enter and you can see that the revenue growth between 2018 and 2019 is 5.4 billion in this case. When it comes to percentage, there are two ways you can do it. A simple way is you take your latest financial numbers, divide by the previous one and subtract one. And this shows you an increase of 17%. The other way which you are probably more familiar with is take the difference and divide it by your previous financial number and you see the result is the same so just quickly on this one usually the scenarios you may have is that you have an actual or most recent financial number and you could be comparing it versus a prior year or a forecast or a budget or another company or a benchmark in that case and let's say these are the actual values right so actual is 120 prior year is 100 and all the way so when you are calculating variances and percentage, you will always start with your actual or most recent and your reference point could be any of these, prior year, forecast, budget or benchmark, right? So in this case, for example, if you are comparing with prior year, your denominator would be prior year minus one and this shows a 20% increase, which you can clearly see here, $20 over $100, right? But if, for example, you wanna compare versus budget, you will keep the actual as the same and just keep moving your denominator. So in the case of actual versus budget, your increase is 4%, right? And the same can be applied for forecast and benchmark. Getting back to our example, now I can simply copy and drag the formula all the way down. And this calculates the variance amounts as well as percentages. You show your increase in revenue as a positive number, but you also show your increase in costs as a positive number. So sometimes you would see organizations change the formula a little bit. In order to show the increase in costs as a negative amount, 
they would reverse the formula. So instead of being 2019 minus 2018, you would see that it is 2018 minus 2019. And you see the number is the same, the percentage is the same, only now you have a negative sign in front of it. But we will revert it back. This is just to let you know that there's another way of presenting this information. Okay, so we are back now. Now let's start analyzing each line item. So starting with revenue, we see that there is an increase in dollar value of 5.4 billion, which is a 17% increase. Is this good or bad? Well, obviously it seems like it is good. The only questions we would need to ask here is that, what is driving this increase? Is this increase because the company is now selling more of its products? So there is a volume increase? Or is this increase a result of changes in prices, increase in prices? This could also be a change in the exchange rate, which is favorable for the company because we know that this company operates in multiple locations. What if there is an increase in price, but there is a decrease in volume? That would not be a great indicator, right? That's one example. Moving on to the cost of revenue. Now, the cost of revenue has increased by 2.8 billion. Was this expected? Well, we did expect an increase in the cost because we are seeing an increase in sales. And usually revenue and cost of revenue or sales and costs, cost of goods sold, they usually have a proportional relationship. Because if you are selling 10 units in one year and then in the next year your units increase to 15 units, you would expect an increase in your total sales dollars, but you would also expect an increase in your total cost dollars because of the increase of five units that you're selling more than last year, right? So we do expect an increase in cost of revenue, but is this increase good, bad, in the right proportion to sales? Well, this is where percentages come into play. And you can see that the increase in cost is 24% compared to the 17% increase in revenue, which would also impact your gross profit. And you can see that although you have a favorable gross profit of $2.6 billion, there's an increase of $2.6 billion, but the increase in gross profit is only 13% compared to the revenue increase of 17%. Now, can we say that costs have been managed not as well as they were managed in 2018? At this point, we don't have this information. If you look at your dollars in gross profit, you're seeing an increase, that is 2.6 billion. So it means that on a net basis, the company is still making more money just from the revenue and cost of revenue compared to 2018. Now the increase in cost may be a result of unfavorable mix. Maybe the company started selling new products and that's, that has resulted in increase in sales. But these new products come at a lower margin, a lower gross profit margin, which means their portion of cost is higher. And that could have led to the higher costs of 24%. So while ideally we would expect a 17% increase in cost of revenue when we have seen an increase in sales of 17%, this is not always the case. And that's why understanding the mix is very important. What sort of products is the company selling, right? Now, of course, mix is not the only factor that impacts your uh, cost of revenue. There could be also an increase in costs, just the prices of raw material that the company buys. There could also have been an uh, increase in production costs. There could be many factors that go in there. At a higher level, it does look like the cost of revenue has increased, but we can't just make that judgment based on seeing that the costs have increased by a higher percentage compared to revenue, because we need to understand the mix involved there as well. And in the end, for the owners or shareholders, there is still more gross profit generated of 2.6 billion. So it's not necessarily a bad sign. We just have to ask more questions related to the cost, okay? What about operating expenses? Now, sales or revenue have increased by 17%. Operating expenses have also increased by 18% or $1.8 billion. So if you compare 17 and 18% at a high level, you look at it and you say, it looks like operating expenses have increased in line with the revenue growth. 
when it comes to operating expenses it's a little more tricky because part of your operating expenses increase with the increase in revenue but there's always another part an element which is fixed costs like in operating expenses you would usually have your selling and advertising and marketing expenses which one could argue that they increase with the increase in revenue as you may be performing more and more selling and advertising activity but there's also a journal and admin part which may or may not be fixed so if the company is producing and selling an increased number of products without a significant change in their structure like they do not have to acquire or rent additional buildings or facilities and they do not have to hire additional finance or hr or it staff then in that case one could argue that the increase in operating expenses should be at a slower pace compared to the increase in revenue but then again it depends because it could have it could be that in 2019 uh, the company is going through a major change and is in the process of spending more and more and that's why you see that your increase in operating expenses is slightly higher than your total revenue so again it goes back to the budgets the estimates what is the plan what is the strategy of the company for that year so knowing that analyzing that is important but in general on a continuing basis if your revenue is growing uh, it would be a good sign a good indicator that your operating expenses do not increase at the same level as revenue and they become a lower a smaller and smaller portion of your total income statement when you do a vertical analysis now if you look at the interest expenses we can't even compare the expenses with your uh, revenue or gross profit growth because they are dependent on a completely different factor your interest expenses are really dependent on how much loan or funding an organization has acquired to finance its operations which bear interest so in this case we see a 3% increase but we'll have to look at the balance sheet to see if there is an increase in the interest bearing loans or financial obligations but it looks like they are still when well managed compared to last year because you don't see a significant increase in your interest expenses similarly for other income or expense items they are usually not related to revenue so you have to look at them separately on their own and in this case you see a significant gain or um, favorable variance in 2019 from other income or expenses and if you look at it it looks like there was a one off large item of expense you see the amount is negative so it means that this is instead of income this is an expense that coca cola had in 2018 which was a large item and this did not repeat in um, 2019 or the amount was lower for 2019 so we see a gain of 1.8 billion right now this 1.8 billion is also helping the overall ebitda growth of 2.7 billion so you can say out of the 2.7 billion you see in growth of ebitda 1.8 billion is attributable to other income or expenses now interest depreciation and taxes are not part of the ebitda number of 2.7 billion but they are part of the net income number when it comes to taxes a good indicator would be your income before taxes and although i see an increase of 178 million dollars in taxes which is an 11% increase what i would be really interested in is the income before taxes if i try to calculate a rate for income taxes the calculation i can do is take your income tax expense and divide by your income before taxes which gives you a percentage of 17% for 2019 and if i copy the formula for 2018 it's 19% so it does look like a positive movement in income taxes but as you know income taxes depend on many factors So how do we summarize in a few words what we see from our horizontal analysis of 2019 versus 2018? Well, it looks like 2019 has been a good year for revenue growth. We see a 17% revenue growth and also an EBITDA growth of 26%. However, it is important to note that the EBITDA growth of 26% would have been a 
a much smaller number had we not seen an impact of an unfavorable other expense in 2018. Also worth noting or considering are the increase in cost of revenue, which is increasing at a much higher pace compared to revenue, and also the operating expenses, which are also slightly above the overall revenue increase. So two areas to look at and understand. Um, these two areas are where I will be asking most of my questions, plus just an understanding of what has really driven the increase in revenue. This is an example of the analysis of increase in revenue. Now let's compare 2020 with 2019 and see the analysis of a decrease in revenue. If you like the information so far, please click thumbs up or like, and let's see you in the next video.